All right, there's been a few people who have been asking me how I hook up my pan camera on my Skywalker, and this is just a really quick and dirty, really easy way to hook up a, um, a pan servo for your camera. So it's made out of just basic materials like balsa and, and light ply and a little bit of glue. So I'm going to take this thing apart and show you how it's built. Okay, so I have it hooked up to where I just rotate this extra channel. I got mine hooked up to channel 6. And I just fly around like that. It's kind of awkward sometimes until I got used to it because I got my goggles on. I have to reach down and like, okay, where's those three? Okay, there they are. Okay, is this one right here? So it's kind of awkward to be honest, but if you have this thing hooked up to like maybe a slider on the back of your radio or something like that, it would be a little bit easier. Okay, so as you can see, the GoPro is just held down by a Velcro strap. I can remove the GoPro. And also, just take note that I can also access the SD card slot really easily. I've got everything kind of out of the way. Uh, one other thing really quick is you want to make sure that when you use the Velcro it down, that the Velcro is in front of the lens. And also that you can still press these buttons. I can still reach in here and turn this thing on and off. The Velcro holds it on. So this is a Velcro, just from like a Home Depot. God, I don't know how much it was, a couple bucks or something for a Velcro strap. It's got the hook and loop on one side and the other stuff on the other side. Okay, so then once you pull the Velcro off, this camera just comes right off. It's just, it's just held in by Velcro. It's never come off once. It stays in there rock solid. Uh, the thing on the top is just a, that's half of a ballpoint pin that I cut. And I basically just mounted that with Gorilla Tape over the audio feed because it was just too windy in my audio. So that's all that is. Otherwise, just a basic GoPro Hero. Okay, the tray <clears throat> is made out of balsa and ply. First of all, I've got this wedge in here. This wedge I put in here because this tray sits flat. The, the flat part of this tray is flat with the rest of the airplane. So flying straight and level, you're generally going to get a straight ahead view. The only problem is I want my GoPro tilted down. So after I built this thing, I decided to put a wedge in there so that it tilted down slightly. Now if you look at the angles, my um, FPV camera is pointed out just slightly down, and my GoPro I have tilted down just a little bit more because I want to see a little bit more of the ground than I do with my flying camera. Little yellow thing that shows up in my videos, and that tells me when I'm centered because as I showed you, I have a um, a dial that I use to turn my camera. I have no way to tell when it's centered or not. So I might be flying around like this if I didn't have this yellow marker right here. So I've got that there so that when I got my goggles on, I can rotate that dial until I see that, that yellow thing line up in the center of my flight camera. That way I know my camera's pointed straight ahead again. Otherwise I wouldn't know because there's no reference. I can't really see the nose of the plane. So that's what the yellow thing is for. All it is is just a piece of wire with some golden rod and then glued into my canopy. So anyway, camera comes off. Then I got the wedge in here. That just floats. Like I said, it's had no issues at all. Okay, now down in that little hole, that's the servo horn. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so all this is is that's just the servo screw in there. This is the screw that normally just goes right inside your high-tech servo. I use a high-tech servo for, my, for mine. It's a standard size servo. But anyway, if you look at this mount, it's really basic. All you have is a piece of balsa wood. you got a piece of balsa wood. And then I've got three pieces of light ply around mine. Now, if you're making one of these, I would make these light ply pieces a little bit higher on the sides. And the reason is because when that wedge sits in there, it basically makes it toward the top, the bottom of the GoPro is right at the top of that ledge right there. So I would make the side pieces like that high, but keep the one low in the front because you want to be able to access that button and you want to see the the um, the status light. Oh, also you want to make sure you have enough room for your for your SD card. So when you're when you're when you're making this little contraption, you just want to kind of do the I don't have plans for it or anything like that. So you're just going to have to look at it and say, okay, I need to make it like this. But anyway, you can see it fits tight. It's a tight fit. I measured that pretty exact. And then I made it, and then initially it sit like this. But then, like I said, I put the wedge in there. And then when you, when you add the wedge to it, it kind of makes it to where only a little bit of the sides are holding the GoPro in. Like I said, that hasn't been an issue at all. But if I was to do this again, I'd make those sides a little bit higher. 
on the bottom of this little contraption, this is the uh, servo horn. And all I did was I drilled a hole which was big enough for the head of this screw so that fits in there so it goes all the way. And then if you look down in there you can't really see it. I guess you can. But you can see the plastic of the servo horn right there. So all that is is it's just a servo horn that's mounted to the bottom of that. It's basically all you got to do, you don't have to do anything to it. You just drill a hole in your balsa and then you just set that puppy in there and screw it down with four screws. And bam, you got a tray to mount your, uh, mount your camera. That's nice and sturdy. Now I'm going to pull this screw off. Okay, so I've got camera wire. Make sure you have enough. And all I have is just have it going back in that area. Let me take this off so you can see it better. Now this is the bottom. Now all I did, this is really, really basic. I didn't, I, I didn't modify the canopy on the bottom. All I did was I just traced the outline onto a sheet of like, what is this, eighth inch ply, light ply. Just use really light ply because it's sturdy enough. And then I just cut this out, glued it to the bottom. I don't know what the heck I used. I think I used medium CA. You can use Gorilla Glue or whatever. And then what I did, if you look really carefully, you can see I sanded. I used the disc sander to kind of go around the edges right here to make them kind of flush. So it made it look like it was just part of the plane, so it's really flush all the way around. If you want to get really crazy, you can sand the front edge to a little bevel kind of, so it helps with the aerodynamics. But anyway, once you do that, as you can see, I didn't cut a notch for it at all. I left the canopy intact on the bottom, and I just glued that piece on there, that plywood. So what you have to do in order to make it fit, and you can see, if you really look, you can see how the top edge of the canopy now rises just a little bit higher than the fuselage, and to me that wasn't a big deal at all. So now what you've got to do is, I wouldn't suggest shaving, normally you would think, okay, well, I'll just shave the top of this and it'll fit down there to make up for the width of this plywood. Don't do that. What you want to do is you want to go inside where there's a lot of thick styrofoam and try to use a knife or a hobby knife or an exacto knife to cut about an eighth inch off of where that this thing is seated. I'm pointing in the wrong area. You want to shave it right here in this area right here. And so once you shave that down about an eighth of mine's really rough and kind of crappy. <laughs> but once you shave that down, just shave it down. You'll know if you got a right fit because you'll put it in there and then this, this thing will line up at the, at the front end. So that's how you know that that's in there properly. The way I had my servo mounted, um, you can kind of look to see where it's spaced. I don't have any measurements for it right now. But I wanted this thing to be, I didn't want any of the nose in my plane at all. I didn't want any of this in my plane. Some of it does show up in my videos, but ideally I wanted to have this thing as far forward as possible and be able to point down to where I wouldn't see any of the aircraft. I would just have clear video. Well, I got it as far forward as I could, and then I cut the hole for the servo, and then I got it all ready to go, and then when I went to put this thing in here, it wouldn't go in. And the reason was, was because that the, the front of that servo was hitting the foam. And so what I had to do as an afterthought was I had to cut a little notch in there um, in order so my, my servo would fit in. So like again, if I was to do this whole project all over again, I would take those things into consideration, maybe move the camera back a little bit or whatever. Okay, so all that is is plywood on the bottom. I cut a hole for the servo. Just nice tight fit. It's got a pretty tight fit for the servo. Um, and then I used uh, some strips of, this is actual hardwood, some type of hardwood I picked up at the hobby shop. I don't know, just use it, just get servo rail wood or whatever. Um, that way the screws, when you screw the, um, the servo and you want it to mount to something more, some more solid and thicker than this, this, than this light ply. So now the servo uses standard servo. I didn't use a micro servo on this. And it's also a digital servo. It's a high-tech HS5485HB. And I forgot what all that stuff means, but when I was looking at it, I, just, I realized this would be the ideal servo for a pan, pan uh, camera. Okay, so the reason why you want to go digital on this is because to get to 180 degree movement, you want to be able to go from looking forward to 90 degrees that way, and then 90 degrees that way at least. And so what you need in order to get that is for a high-tech servo, high-tech digital servos. I bought an HPP21. Uh, servo, it's a servo tester and a programmer for digital servos and it's really easy to use just follow the instructions and you'll get 180 degree movement out of your out of your servo 
Now, one thing you want to notice is that you see how there's no grommets. See, I don't have any rubber grommets on the servo. I just have just bare washers and screws holding it down. Um, the reason is because you don't want this thing moving at all. Because any 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 slight movement down here, any rocking down here, is going to translate. Once you get all this stuff on here, this and the camera, all this heavy weight, it's going to translate into a lot of movement up here in this direction. Any in all four directions really. So you don't want you want to have that as tight a fit as possible and clamp these screws down nice and tight so this thing doesn't move at all. I got one servo wire. You can see the yellow, red, and black that's coming from the servo, and I just gorilla taped it to the bottom of the canopy. That's all I did there. I used gorilla tape, and also the um, the video wire also goes in through there, and it comes out the back in that vicinity too. And I, again, I just gorilla taped them down. It works just fine. It holds them in there. When you're doing all this stuff, you can kind of look at my video to see how I have it. I was trying to get my the most important thing for me was the HD camera. I wanted this thing to be, you know, pretty much, if not center, then at least have kind of like a pilot and command, kind of left-hand view of the whole area. So I kind of have it situated to where the GoPro is completely centered on the aircraft and the lens is slightly off to the side. And then this FPV camera, this one isn't so important as far as where it is on the airplane as long as it gets a front view. And so that's why that one's off to the side. I actually did that kind of as a last minute. You know, where should I put the FPV camera? I know. I'll bolt it to the side of the, of the GoPro tray. I had to drill one extra hole in order to get this, this mounted on here because it only came with one hole. So I had to drill an extra one back here in order to get that mounted. Two screws there and then a screw on each side. And this thing's held firmly in place. It moves a little bit. If you want to adjust it, it'll move. But when you're flying, it stays put. So just adjust it where you like it and fly however you like it. And that's about it. Um, one other thing I did is I put some Gorilla Tape on the back of this, uh, the FPV camera in order to keep it you know, kind of tight to this body. And what, you want to run your wiring to where you have enough slack, obviously. I have just enough and no more so that that swivels. Now another thing I did is I chopped the crap out of my canopy. I kept taking chunks out and chunks out and chunks out until this thing swiveled back in there. And um, you probably don't want to hack your, if you don't want to hack your uh, your um, canopy up that much, you could if you wanted to. You could figure out some way to mount this camera either on top here and have it permanent. That way it won't. That way you'll still have this much of your canopy left. Or you can mount your FPV camera back in the um, in the stock the stock way by putting it back here or wherever you want. Uh, for me, when I when I do my ne my next plane, I'm not going to have it right here. I'm going to figure out some way to have them either on independent servos or something because it's just when it's hanging out there, it's just kind of oh, it's not very aerodynamic. It works fine. It works perfect, but it'll also take a little bit of this weight off of this tray, so only the GoPro Hero will be on top of the standard servo, and so it'll help maybe. It's to where it's not so much, uh, you know, not so much for that servo by itself to move around.